Hello, Neunschweinstein lovers and Bavaria fans. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jana and this is Curves on the Road. Originally, I had a gorgeous intro for you with the castle in the background, but to do the intro, I had to go on a very wobbly bridge, very high above the ground. And I was so scared that in the stress, I forgot to turn on my mic. So here's how it looked, but you won't hear the sound. <laughs> there will be two parts of this video. The first part will focus on the touristic information, where you can get your tickets, where to park, how to get there. And the second part will be about the creator who had this castle made, and that is King Ludwig II of Bavaria. If you're staying in Munich, you can get to Neunschwanstein in about an hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes. When you reach a little white church, on the opposite side, in the woods on the hill, there's already the castle visible. And you have to park at the parking under the castle. Be warned that it is quite far from the actual entrance to the castle. We stayed around four hours and paid 10 euros for it. But when you park, there's still quite a long way to the castle. At the website, they actually recommend to be at the parking an hour and a half before your tour starts. Why? Because generally you have two options. One option is to walk up. It's quite a hill and it takes around 40 minutes. I definitely didn't like this option. Or there's option two, you can take some mean of transport to get you up. Either a horse carriage if you want to be a romantic, but then you have to count with really long waiting time, or the bus shuttle, that's what we took. It cost three and a half euros if you go both ways, and two euros if you only want to go up. We arrived at the bus stop when the bus just was arriving. But there were so many people that we didn't get on the first bus. So count with around 20 minutes for the next bus arrive. And if you're coming at a really busy day, yeah, you can take good 40 minutes before you actually can get up to the castle. If you're planning to go in 2022 or maybe actually even 2023 you might need the facial mask we were surprised because in Czech and most of the Europe all these requirements are already gone but in Germany you still have to wear a mask in public transport and indoors public places once you get up to the bus station you still are not at the entrance of the castle. You still have to go down the hill around stunning views, but you have to count another five, seven minutes just to arrive at the main entrance. You can buy your tickets either online, that's what we did, or at the tourist center in the village under the castle. The problem is the tours are very much sold out. We checked four days before our trip and it was all gone. So I called the info center and they told me the day you want to go for the tour, check at 8 a.m. the website and there should be new tours listed there. And we tested it and it actually worked. It costs two euros more. It costs 17 euros on the website, 15 euros if you buy it in person at the info center but for me risking quite a long drive and then not getting the castle was not an option so i preferred to pay the two euros extra the tickets are always for certain hour and they are either in english or in german germans are punctual so make sure that you arrive with a little bit time reserve for your tour i have no idea what would happen if you missed your time of the entry, but I imagine it might be a problem or you might not get to see the castle at all. So how does the tour look like? It is quite a big group, so count that there'll be quite a lot of people in not so big spaces and the rooms are much darker than I expected. 
Also, the biggest bummer, I mean, I don't understand why the castle start doing it now, but you can't take any pictures inside. No footage. I so much wanted to get you guys some interior footage and yeah, it, it's not allowed. It was beautiful, the castle is being renovated, so I think one or two rooms were not accessible when we were on the tour, but the whole experience was stunning. The paintings, the fantasy, the castle is actually quite new, it is from the 19th century, so it all pretends to be medieval, right? One place I was grateful it was just pretending to be medieval were the stairs. You have to climb around 300, 400 stairs when you're at the castle and they are the modern normal one. It's a spiral staircase but a normal sturdy concrete one, which is great. If you can't do stairs and you would still want to visit the castle, I saw elevators in the castle. I'm not sure if they can be used only by the employees or if it's also for the handicapped tourists. Guys, my childhood is ruined. If you play the game Gabriel Rodriguez within like I did in the 90s, you have completely different perception of the castle. You know, the theory in the game was that King Ludwig was actually a werewolf. And the paintings that are on the walls have hidden wolves here and there. That's no wolves. Like, there are no wolves on those paintings, like even in the woods. Oh, I was so upset that it doesn't add up. Oh, but like, yeah, I will still keep the memory, but if you come for the memory, the memories from the game, you'll be absent by it. There are free toilets, cafe, souvenir store, all right in the castle. So if you get thirsty or you want a little fridge magnet like me, you can get it in the castle. You definitely shouldn't miss the bridge that overlooks the castle. You might have to wait a little to get on the bridge. And trust me, you don't want to be there when it's too crowded. The bridge is really, you know, I love this place and I hate this place at the same time because like the bridge, the views are stunning, but the planks are kind of wobbly and you know, being a big girl on a wobbly plank, not most comfortable and the fall down is big. And now, let's dive deep into the Bavarian forests and uncover the tragic and mysterious story of the King Ludwig II. King Ludwig was born 25th of August, 1845. He was sometimes called Swan King or Fairy Tale King. Why? Because much more than reigning the kingdom, he loved arts music and architecture and all of the buildings that he had built are pieces of romantic art. Young Ludwig spent his childhood at the Hohenschwangau castle. He grew up in that yellow castle over there. It's stunning here. The scenery, the Alps, really you don't wonder that Ludwig grew up such a romantic. It's actually right at the opposite hill from Neunschwanstein now. We visited only the outside of the castle because there was no time to get in. Growing up at this castle made Ludwig fall in love with the chivalry and medieval stories.
I love the character of Ludwig II. He was really torn person. He was quite certainly gay and he could never act upon his feelings because of the Catholic Bavaria of 19th century. He was supposed to marry the youngest sister of the Queen of Austria. You probably know her. Her name was Elizabeth of Austria and she was nicknamed Sissy. Sissy was his best friend and confiant, so there is a lot of correspondence between her and Ludwig in the nearby museum. Ludwig was most likely homosexual, so he never went through with the wedding. He kept postponing it until he cancelled it completely. The love of his life was the opera composer Richard Wagner. Ludwig loved his operas, he fell in love with his music and storytelling and possibly even with the charismatic author himself. Ludwig started supporting the lavish lifestyle of Wagner and he sponsored majority of the operas. Another thing that Ludwig was fascinated by was the architecture. He wanted to build castles that were reminiscent of the good old days. He loved French Renaissance, but also the medieval fortresses. Neunschwanstein is supposed to be a tribute to his main heroes and his favorite operas. If there's one romantic king, it's definitely Ludwig. Romanticism is an art, literature, intellectual movement that celebrated Middle Ages, chivalry, nature and emotions and was skeptical to science and industrialization. Neunschwanstein was the first out of three castles that Ludwig had built and hopefully in the upcoming years I'll be able to show you all three. Why am I so obsessed with Ludwig II and Neuschwanstein? When I was a teenager, I fell in love with a video game called Gabriel Knight, The Beast Within. It was set in the Bavarian region and it played with the premise that King Ludwig was actually a werewolf. Ludwig, during one of his favorite sleigh rides, got bitten by a werewolf and became one himself. And that's why his ministers deemed him insane and he died so prematurely. If you're interested in this game, it's really cool story. The walkthroughs are all over the YouTube, so I'm pretty sure you will find some version and you can learn the whole story with all the intricate details. I was really a big fan when I was younger and the story is really good. You can watch it like a film. It was like live action video games, so you can basically watch it as a movie. In this game you'll also learn immense amount of information about Neunschwanstein and King Ludwig. Bear in mind some of the information is little twisted to help the story. The swan motif is featured throughout the castle, but it is particularly prominent in this room. Both the swan and the lily were symbols Ludwig associated with himself. They represented his ideals of majesty and purity. The painting behind the swan shows Lohengrin's arrival. What happened to Ludwig? Ludwig had always been a fragile soul that loved arts and architecture more than reigning a country. He lost the war with Prussia, which didn't help his royal credit, and overall he was overspending on building his lavish castles and supporting the musicians and composers and overall he was spending a lot of money and not contributing to leading the country. His ministers didn't like that at all and they thought it might have to stop. They ordered a psychological evaluation on him and the doctors have actually never seen him but they still produced a report saying that Ludwig is insane and he can't be a king anymore. So they forced Ludwig to abdicate and a day after the abdication, 
Ludwig committed suicide. Or did he? It was the most suspicious suicide you can imagine. They found him drowned in the water that was just waist high. It wouldn't be so strange if Ludwig wasn't a great swimmer and the autopsy didn't find any water in his lung. The conspiracy theory says he went for a walk with his doctor, he killed the doctor and he wanted to escape, but somebody shot him. Up to this day, the royal family doesn't want to provide the Ludwig's remains for autopsy to show the right truth. Ludwig II died prematurely drowning in a lake in beloved swans. So here's his spirit level. Hey Ludwig! So that's it. That's the whole video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why don't you give me a romantic thumb up and you can subscribe to my channel. I upload every Sunday. Thank you very much for watching. Have an amazing rest of your day and bye.